Previously on the Arius Adventures, we've come for guidance and warn you all about this lich, about these enemies, and that we're going to stop these guys, or at least do our best, and we may need support. That that the White Tower has been destroyed and that Io has been taken can only be meaning one thing, that they're trying to corrupt Arius and the world itself and a ploy to destroy all life in an effort to bring Alt-Retina, the true Alt-Retina, forth. Do you think you can find her? Uh, Io herself is... She is a living essence of the creator of this world. Well, shit, okay. So it's like a god. And you see a foggy void and Tagoro, this looks almost familiar to you when you met the the guardian of the veil vale and you saw your mother and as you continue to move through this you pass through these cold marble walls until you come into what looks to be an empty dark cell then it takes on this bluish golden glow and for those of you who've met Io, you recognize this presence as hers what was that do you know where she is that is the veil of the way raven queen her citadel her lonely citadel we can't just leave her there yeah we gotta save her or she'll get corrupted crap and garris ah <laughs> Shopping at the worst time. I know, right? He's off on his own adventure right now. <laughs> oh, wait. Huh. Would this help? I pull out the feather. I got from the, like, Grim Reaper woman of the Raven Queen. You hear what sound like crows cawing outside, and then the whole room is suddenly filled with, like, a t- Torrent of black feathers. Many would be flipping up. Tagoro, what have you done? <laughs> I'm just calling the guardian of the veil. Well, well, well. What have we here, my dear? So, we have two catch-ups to do real quick. So, with the main part of the Ram Pack, the guys who didn't sneak off early in the morning, uh, you guys, <laughs> that would be Tagoro, Manny, Roshin, and Farron, made it to the palace after discovering your buddy Garrus had wandered off on his own to go and do some shit and things. And you got to meet the queen, uh, less were you praying. And her son, Gerdin. You spoke with them briefly and you got to meet the brown wizard, Fitzwick, who took you guys up to his private towers and you shared everything with him. And in return, he seemed to take you guys and what you told him of Io and what had befallen five years ago during your timey-wimey bit away with Nim. Uh, He took it all very, very grim and seriously, and he's very worried, especially when you mentioned Drachna and the the White Tower falling. And he explained that if the White Tower fell, that was bad news for the world. And as he began to rummage through some of his books and things, you guys used Roshin's blood to scry. And that's when you guys learned that. My name? Well... You may call me Odette. The Keeper of Souls. And that's when Tagoro had the idea, let's talk to one of her Grim Reapers, one of her Guardians of the Veil. He still had a feather from the Guardian he had met when he talked to his mother. And when we left off with them, the tower was surrounded and filled with feathers and ravens and in the center of all of that a familiar voice was heard to Tagoro and the guardian 
was standing there. Meanwhile, Garrus, you enjoyed a interesting morning uh, to yourself. You got to know the innkeeper and her son a little bit. You sent a little postal note to your girlfriend back home in in uh, Vivandi. <laughs> Sh- shut up. Huh? <laughs> you did some shopping. And then you eventually made your way back to the palace on your own to catch up with the group. And I and, day. Yeah, and as you were doing that, you weren't immediately allowed to catch up with your group because you had to wait in line with everybody else. Uh, and there you met a grumpy dwarf representative from the High King of Thalarang, uh, Command, a commander who was waiting to speak with the queen. You got to speak with the queen and she told you she was kind of like putting the guy off because she wasn't a fan of the high king and all that jazz. Uh, she may have flirted with you a little bit. <laughs> Don't tell Naomi. Shh. <laughs> well, she did so in front of her own son, so that wasn't awkward at all. Um, but yeah, uh, after all of that and you offering to help her and she seemed amused by you, you were finally being led to the wizard's tower. And so we're going to start with you there. Um, as you are being led to the tower, the attendant is, he still seems kind of like awkward and everything after that whole bit with the queen. And uh, as you are, you two are heading up these stairs, you begin hearing a, a calling sound. And then it starts growing to more than just one calling sound. And the attendant, as he's walking and climbing up the stairs, he kind of looks confused. And he's just like, huh. That's, uh, all right, as he leads you up. And then out one of the slitted windows, you see what look like crows flying past. And they're flying up towards the tower in this huge flock. And it's just this cacophony of of ravens. Okay, so one of two things is happening right now. I to- <laughs> turn towards him. One of three things are happening. Oh, a, oh, okay. A, my friend Roshin has finally uh, uh, gone into with her black magic side. Wait, what? B, Mandy is doing something. Or C, and most likely the choice, to grow shenanigans. So... Probably should uh, get there post haste. Oh, okay. All, all right. Uh, he picks up his step and begins like, cl- like, kind of like picks up the edges of his robes and begins like rushing faster up the stairs. And you, I, I'm assuming, yeah, within your heavy plate mail, you're dunking behind him. Yeah, thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, uh, in inside of the tower, you guys are to go out, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing well. I have that crazy smile on my face, like yes. Of course you do, buddy. Roshin is hiding. <laughs> Well, actually, at this point, didn't we hear the goddess or the dark? The guardian. The guardian. guardian. Yeah, the guardian. So, yeah, uh, you guys hear the the guardian. She's standing there at the center, and uh, I believe I had her say, "Well, well, well, what have we here?" Immediate erection. Why? Hello again, darling. And Hi. she's looking right at Tagoro. Cassie, if I'm wearing armor, you hear ping. 
Tagoro doesn't usually wear armor, remember? Okay, well then I am full on full mask. That boy. My god. And didn't Love you it. move to go and stand in front of Roshin? Yeah, with my giant boner, apparently. <laughs> oh, thank god. Good god. It's okay, Jeez. Roshin's still busy hiding. And she surveys the room in front of her. Again, crows are still going, uh, circling. They begin, like, settling and sitting on bookshelves and, and on the tables and perching uh, in the rafters of this tower. And you guys feel all of these eyes blinking down at you. And the whole room appears to have this, like, colder presence about it. Like, Roshin... It's a coldness that you're very familiar with, but now it radiates around the entire room. Hello, lady. Why, hello again, dear. I must admit, I didn't expect to hear from you so soon. At least... Not until it was time to collect your soul. Counting down the days. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to have my good friend Manny explain the situation more. But basically, someone's mucking up in your business, which affects us, and they're messing with your realm. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Oh, we know so. Manny, take it away. I... <laughs> she turns and her eyes fall on you, Manny. And again, like her eyes are this. I don't remember if I described them before, Adam, but they're like these pale eyes that are gray, but they seem to like pierce right through you. And it's not that she's looking at you, but she's looking into you. Oh, um, well. <laughs> Hi, first off, Manny, Manny, Popple, nice to meet you. Um, we didn't mean to disturb you, of course. Does Manny know anything about Guardians, first off, or? You can make a History, Arcana, or Religion check. Go with Arcana, that's way higher. 26. All right. So, you know that these Guardians, they're usually the ones that... They're, they're like the sentinels of the veil. The veil is where souls go to when they, when they die, essentially. And the guardians, they're the ones that usher those souls from the mortal and living realm into the veil, into the ethereal realm. They are the ones who make sure souls cross over and they're also the ones who make sure people like necromancers and people who try to like fuck with souls by like raising the dead or manipulating or you know trap souls and stuff in other planes or dimensions that they're not supposed to be they're they're the balance they're like the watchdogs of the veil vale. they're the ones that the raven queen she puts the beware of dog in her front lawn. Ghost cops. Exactly. La laughs nervously in undead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And essentially, Tagoro has summoned one right into the middle of this wizard's tower. So is anyone surprised at this point that I made a friend out of a ghost cop? I mean... No. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> so yeah, she she's looking down at you, and she hasn't looked over at Roshin yet, but it's probably safe to say she's not stupid. Right. She, she's just hiding. <laughs> yeah. She's behind the girl <laughs> and trying to make herself as small as she can. <laughs> just like... Tiny little light eyes peeking out, just like, oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> just like covering up in the bear cloak. Just yeah. <laughs> Even Farron's kind of taking like a defensive position, <laughs> just in case. Well, um, so I guess the issue is, 
is that um, our friend Io, which is a very important person in this world, is possibly with the Raven Queen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's not dead. She was captured and brought there from our understanding. And you are wishing me to intervene? Yeah, right, Tigaro? Yeah, okay. So you remember when I first talked to you, you got really mad at the dwarf for doing this magic? Yes. That You said that's not allowed, right? It is... Frowned upon? It is very much frowned upon. Well, then what do you think the people who kidnapped this... Io, and then st- is stashing her away in your realm with your goddess or near your goddess as a how do you think that tracks and looks for other people to know that it's super easy to do that because if you guys get mad about talking to the dead but it's totally okay for you to go use it as basically a jail I mean it looks bad she looks like she's about to agree with you but the crows that are roost, the ravens that are roosting like right over the door frame begin to caw and flap their wings ag- in agitation as there is a rapid pounding on the door. And Garrus, you and the attendant arrive just outside. Like kicks down the door. <laughs> Never fear, because I am here! (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) And he just looks at this big ethereal garden, and he's just like, oh. Yeah, she stands... So what you see as you crash in, you see a room that immediately radiates with this, like, unnatural cold energy. Like, you're familiar with the coldness that surrounds Roisin. It permeates the entire room and you see dozens at least a hundred ravens surrounding the room through all over the room you see this short gnome in like purple uh dull purple robes and stuff and you see your party there with him and in the center of the room is this nearly nine foot tall ethereal being in black garb almost like a a suit of sorts that seems to kind of shimmer and shift and like smoky like smoke seems to kind of like shimmer and shift off her clothes uh, of like black and reds and white and she has dark skin and pale gray, uh, like silvery gray eyes and like almost black dreadlocks and stuff and almost like elven like ears and these large feathers in like a a head clip on one side of her head on her head and stuff as she regards everybody in the room and as you crash in her eyes shoot from Manny over to you uh, religion check. Go ahead. Fifteen. Do I know the name of uh, the deity? This isn't or a deity. This isn't a deity. Uh, this is you. I would say with a fifteen, you know that this is a grim reaper. Oh no. You know that this is a grim reaper of the Raven Queen. I see. Okay, and. As Garrus comes bursting through, does he notice that Roshin is behind Tagoro? Yeah. Okay. Garrus is going to come up all cool and natural, and he's just going to say, Oh, hello. She would be giving off almost everything that is the exact opposite of Foltis and all of your, like, celestial presence and stuff. Like, all that is Foltis is the exact opposite of all that she is and all that's in this room right now. Yeah. 
Garrus is just gonna play it cool and be like, <laughs> uh, "Oh, I, I, uh, I suppose you are essentially the Grim Reaper. Nice to meet you. My name is Garrus Malkin, and I am a pawn of Fultus." <laughs> Why, hello, pawn. I'm guessing I'm talking to the queen. Oh, you think this is the Raven Queen? Yeah. Okay, all right. She uh, she arches a brow at you in curiosity, definitely reading the celestial radiant vibes you're giving off right now. Manny, you can see she... She kind of has like her the the almost amused regard she had for Tagoro and your guys' group at first seems to be kind of shifting to almost like a a guarded predator over something over another predator that she might need to be wary of. So now that we're all acquainted. <laughs> So does Garrus notice uh, that she raises a brow when uh, I, I mentioned the queen? You notice the brow raise, but since you haven't, since you just got in here, you're not able to get much more of a read on her. At least not yet. If she raises a brow, like out of confusion or interest? You're not sure yet. Okay. Either way, Garrus is like, oh, okay, nothing to fear then. And then I uh, sheave my uh, sword and my shield. And then I just walk past her and walk to the group. He's our friend, too. Is he now? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yep, we're all friends. Mm. He'll probably give you a candle. Now then, where were we? Maybe talking to your queen if you could uh, about rescuing our friend Io that would be really helpful or pointing us in the direction to saving our friend Io that could be also helpful we could do that right group probably yeah she, uh, she crosses her arms and gives a shrug of her shoulders I'm sorry little one Unfortunately, the prisoner that was brought to my lady is of a matter that I'm unable to help you with. I am not allowed to intercede in matters of the Darkspawn's plans. And for that matter, my lady is also not permitted to go against the machinations of her siblings. Wait, when we're siblings did this? Is that what's the understanding? That is, I mean, like, that's what she, that's what this uh, guardian just said. So this is news you're just realizing, that you're just being told. Okay, so one of her siblings did this. That's not good, guys. She said something about Darkspawn. Yeah, the, uh, the Darkspawn are all the the gods of uh, Alt-Retina. They're, Alt-Retina is like the evil Allfather, and his underlings are the Darkspawn gods and goddesses. So he's like the head god of, of evil, and then underneath are all of his quote-unquote children, his Darkspawn children. And in that pantheon of Darkspawn, the Morrigan, or the Raven Queen, is considered one of them. Okay. So she's not willing to help us, Beth. What the Guardian just said, she's not permitted to go against the machinations of her siblings. But what if you don't go against the machinations of your siblings? Yeah, what if you just kind of give us a hint, like, where to go, you know? Like, what if, you know, you're not going against them, you're just letting us know a good area to go into to save our friend? You would require the aid or intervention of powers better equipped at such things. But no normal mortal, such as this group, 
save. Hmm. Perhaps one whose soul remains tied between realms. Starts nervously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Roshin kind of like nervously pokes her head out and like looks around. <laughs> like, hi. <laughs> yes, I do speak of you, little one. How can I help? I'm not sure yet of what you may be able to do, but perhaps what you are could be of some aid if this is the course that you are all set on in freeing the Darkspawn's prisoner. our friend and a bunch of bad stuff is gonna happen if we don't save her yeah we have to save her the world will be corrupted if we don't and it's kind of our fault that she got taken well then i would suggest seeking out the aid of those of the fey and the divine We do have to go to uh, their dimension to get one of the ingredients for you, Roshin. That's true, but I don't know how to get there. Maybe we'll figure it out. <laughs> Pretty much. You mean? Well, we have Fitzwick, too. Uh, yes, uh, that is true. I can help with some of... of what this guardian speaks of. He nervously shifts his gaze to the, the guardian. But we gotta see our other friends, too. Check up on them. I know this is timely, but we could use some backup. We'll be right back with the rest of the episode after a quick break. Greetings, adventurers. It's your community innkeeper, Wander, here to talk about our sponsors. First off is our longtime friends over at Awesome Dice. They've got you covered for all your dice and dice accessory needs, from metal and gemstone to their specialty dice. You can easily find the right set to give you the advantage on your next game session. Make sure to visit AwesomeDice.com to use the special discount code ADVANTAGE10 to get 10% off your next purchase. Add some more dice to your collection with Awesome Dice today, and gain the advantage in all your roles. Next up are our other long-term friends from Elderwood Academy. They have all you need to add to your D&D gaming experience. They create these beautiful hex chests, dice boxes, dice trays, and towers, and many more unique products in their store, including their catapults. You can find all their epic accessories and more at elderwoodacademy.com. Go check them out and look at all the great products. Get your dice catapult today and let them know we sent you. Lastly, we want to thank our awesome patrons for their support to the show. I want to give a special thank you to Not That Chris Brown, who took a punch from a silverback gorilla and broke all of its fingers. I'm Fantastic, who doesn't wear steel toed boots because he already has steel toes. Kyle, who can crack a single leg between his biceps both of them. And Toby Scott, who eats bronze and shits copper. Your support helps us continue to make the show and brings more shenanigans and fun for each of you. So keep it coming. If you want to get in on the extra advantage, check out our three tiers on Patreon for all the exclusive perks to the show, including early episode releases and our bonus campaign, The Rep Scallions, starring me, featuring a new group of adventurers still starring me. And don't forget to check us out all over social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Looking us up at Party Advantage. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, so you stay up to date with all our latest episodes and announcements. 
Lastly, don't forget to check out our website, partyadvantagepod.com. You'll find all our seasons and bonus episodes, and check out all our content there as well. And with that all wrapped up, let's get back to the show. Can you can you tell us a time frame? Like, is there is there like a time frame that she's going to not be there? Like, technically, it's not going against anything. It's just you let something slip, or you didn't think people that could hear you heard you. She chuckles at that, and she holds a hand out, and one of the ravens perched on a nearby bookshelf flies down and lands in her hand, and as it lands, you guys see it shifts in a swirl of smoke and and black sand and contorts into a black and glass... uh, uh, hourglass made of, of of like a black stone and a clear crystalline glass with a with a pure white sand within trickling down and at the moment you see that the top of the sand is about one fourth of the way uh, remaining someone who does math has to do this I can't Oh, wait, <laughs> do I eat it? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? Wait, okay, so it's like an hourglass? Yes, it is a, a the, the raven transformed into an hourglass. And there's only one fourth of the sand left. Yes. We do not have a lot of time. <laughs> it does not look like a lot of time. She does tell you this. Okay. You have less than a year to do what must be done to retrieve the prisoner and restore the balance to the mortal realm. If not, chaos, darkness, and ruin will become unleashed upon the lands of Arius and beyond. That's not a lot of time. Less than a year? That is the worst information time has already been ticking I have that and he points at the hour class <laughs> but of course and she holds it out and the hourglass floats forward and lands in your hand and you have attained the Guardian's Hourglass. Sweet. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you can tell us to help us, miss? This is gonna be really bad for everyone if, if we can't fix this. To be fair, Roisin, there's not much a Guardian would know compared to her queen, but... Yeah. At least she did help us with this, uh, at least. Yeah. Uh, thank you for not hurting me. <laughs> did I ever get her name? Actually, no. You never actually asked her name. What's, what, what, what's your name there? <laughs> We're friends now, so I'm Tagoro. Uh, she blinks in surprise. It appears that nobody ever asked her name before. Uh, she's used to more formal encounters with people, so she's taken aback a little bit at, at this, and she blinks a moment as if she has to remember what she was once given as a name before she answers. My name? Well... You may call me Odette. Odette. Thank you. Thank you for your help, Miss Odette. That's a, a really pretty name. If, if that's okay, if you see that. It is. Thank you, my dear. 
I wish there was more I could help with. Unfortunately, my duties are that which only concern the Vale and its souls. I must maintain their safety and protection, and I cannot let anything happen to them or my lady. How do you know that this corruption won't extend to them too? Can we really trust whatever is happening to stay here? I wish I could be certain on how to answer that, my dear. Well, I guess we just gotta try our best then. Yeah, that's really all we can do. And we gotta be fast. We got this. You may have better luck starting with the Fae. Perhaps seeking out the aid within the ancient grove or what creatures might remain in the abandoned woods. Do, do I know anything about all that? Ish. You actually, Roisin, I will say this. You vaguely remember your mama and papa talking about how you used to tell stories of a guardian of Fae who used to rule long, long ago from a place called the Ancient Grove. You also remember Mama always used to talk about how the Kitsunes used to rule, especially the Kitsune Queens, mm -hmm. used to rule from a place called the Cherry Blossom Grove. And that is now what is known as the Abandoned Forest. And it's far to the northwest. Or she kind of pricks up when she mentions that, and she's like, "Okay, I know where, where that is. I I know a little bit about it. Mama and Papa used to tell me about it all the time." I have a map. All right. So where are we exactly again? You guys are in Kern. Or and if you were to follow the coast to the west, you would eventually hit what remains of the abandoned woods. I wonder if it might be faster if we travel by sea. And then the other option is to travel into what is not essentially the heart of the human kingdoms to the ancient grove and its forest. And is the, the cherry blossom grove is the abandoned woods? Yeah, well, the Cherry Blossom Grove, its exact location is lost, but it's somewhere within the abandoned woods. Oh, well, y'all know that if we go to the Human Kingdom, they hate orcs. Yeah, <laughs> they're, the they're, and like anything else, like they are so racist. They're not fans of orcs and Nikojin and elves. Anything um, that's not them, basically. They're also, allies with they're allies with dwarves. They're okay with halflings. Well, I mean, we could go to the abandoned woods, but do we want to go to see our friends first? Do we have time? You guys have Albion and Vivandi, which is back here over the Great Mountains. That's so far. Yeah, but I can teleport us. And it can yeah. teleport us, and yeah. also I'm a hundred percent positive that Fitzwick would let me borrow his teleportation circle for one minute so I can memorize it so I can get back here. That's a talk you'll have to have with him after all this. <laughs> Come on, Fitzwick. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I could definitely do that because I have a a uh, spot in. Vivandi and a or Albion and a spot in the Gearhead Tavern. I guess if we have enough time and we're fast. It's up to y'all. We can go get our healer. You still have this guardian standing in the middle of the room. Can I get another feather to call you again? You're asking her for an. You still have the first feather. It hasn't vanished. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. 
I just was just worried because, like, what if we do find proof that this goes against her queen? Like, wouldn't she want to know? That's why why he didn't vanish. Okay, got you. Harris looks at Tagoro and is like, "Of course it was you." Uh huh. A goofy ass <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> Guys, just like, oh, my dear poor looks. <laughs> Be careful how often you use that feather to summon me. I know, you said not to mess with these things, but this was a matter of your job. So I risk, I weighed the risk and made an executive decision. Very I'm well. What second decision? <laughs> I can't use it to call you all the time to talk to my mommy, so I understand that. Ma'am. Odetta. Odette. Odette, sorry. That's stupid Adam, not Tagoro. Fuck Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate your help, and sorry to bother you. I'll keep him under wraps. And that is quite alright. Your friend is quite sweet, and I was happy to be able to oblige him in the first time we met. Which, I appreciate you letting him do that. Of course. Just be careful with the things you all tamper with, and further investigate. Well, if it's to make sure that everybody's okay, it'll all be worth it, right? It should be. All right, what now, guys? Uh, looks like we don't have much time, so we gotta get going. Yeah. Oh, Miss Odette? Yes, dear? Um, before you go, I was wondering, have you seen my family? She takes a moment and she looks into your little pinprick glowing eyes and Again, like, she's not looking at you, she's looking into you. Uh, in that same way she was doing with Manny earlier. And after a moment of silent regard, she gives a small nod of her head. Are they okay wherever they are? Your mother, father, and sisters... They have found a nice restful grove here within the Vale. Um, um, Lou? Your brother is not here within the Vale, dear. Huh? What do you mean? Sounds like she's saying Lou may be alive, or at least not dead. Proceed. That's very good news. That's very good news, actually. Your brother may be alive. Her eyes get all wide. Um, and she kind of, like, smiles a little bit. And, and she nods. And, and kind of, like, very obviously taken aback and surprised. And, and... Uh... She... She steps forward a little bit, and she stops, and she like looks shyly up at the the at Odette, and kind of shuffles a little, and she's she's like, can 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 I hug you? Uh, <sighs> of course, dear. She goes and gets and she hug. and she like dupes down because like she's super tall, <laughs> so she stoops down lower almost to her knees to allow you to hug her. Yeah, she gives her a big hug. So it's like mm -hmm. cold on cold hugging <laughs> each other. <laughs> she kind of, she like sniffles a little bit and she said thank you for taking care of me, family. You're welcome, my dear. And while I was not the one who guided them into the veil, my brother who did ensured that they were all given a peaceful place within the Lady's Veil. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have anything else for Odette? 
No. Man, he's good. I do. Okay. Garrus reaches into Manny's bag of holding and he mm-hmm. pulls out a white candle. And okay. he walks up to Odette and is like, You know Odette. Not a lot of guardians are, are this uh, nice. Oh, have you met many of my kind? Oh, you just seem like a nicer person that I would assume these people, like guardians, would be in general. Well, that's very kind of you to think so. Well, thank you for all the info, and uh, as Manny brought up, here's a white candle. Oh. (laughs) She, uh, holds out the hand, and she takes it and kind of blinks and looks down at it uncertainly. You see for a moment, like, she brings it up and kind of looks to give, kind of sniff it, but doesn't quite know what to do with it (laughs) before tucking it politely into her pouch. (laughs) Okay. You don't have to do anything with it. It's just a sign of honor. Oh, thank you, dear. That's very kind of you. Tell my mother I said hi to her. I will. I will also do the same for the others. Thank you. Yeah! (laughs) With that, uh, the crows begin to fly off their various perches and everything and begin flapping their wings and stuff. And again, that cacophony of cawing and and screeching begin ringing out in the room. You see uh, Fitzwick kind of ducks his head at all that and and even Farron just kind of was like blinking and taking all of this in with that kind of like stoic regard that he has of just like, I don't know what the fuck has just happened. You know? <laughs> and with that, Odette gives a polite bow of her head to you all and Until we speak again, or until I come to aid your soul into the lady's embrace. Bye-bye. Yay! (laughs) Lots of depressing notes. Really probably should work on that outro, but that's okay. (laughs) I don't want to be embraced or anything, you know. Not gonna lie, she would make a great PR rep. It does not (laughs) sound that bad to die. She makes it sound not so scary. It's nice. And with that, the crows flutter and gather around her until them and she all vanish in a black wisp of smoke and all fall silent in the room. And there's just Tagoro's feather left. Dibs, grab it, Tagoro. Mine. Grab it. (laughs) Mine. Mine. Tagoro, please don't make a habit of doing that. We really don't want the Raven Queen to I, be... Uh, I know. She made it very clear that this is a professional relationship. So I can only... <laughs> it has to be business. <laughs> yeah. Also, you have a girlfriend, idiot. I know. I wasn't saying anything about... I was just saying that her... She She's, like, duty-bound to her job, so, like, it can't be, like... Yes, she helped me that one time, but that's because she was also doing her job. And then this was actually part of her job. So I, I know, I know. I'm not going to, like, talk to her to try to get, you know, out of dying or anything. At least no, you guys know that if crazy. one of you die, you're going to have a really cool friend help you cross over. <laughs> yeah. I nice. so. Oh, yeah, she's totally like our travel agent now. <laughs> she's your travel agent. God. <laughs> All right. Roshin's just kind of standing there smiling now. (laughs) Yeah, Roshin, you just found out your brother's still alive. Theoretically. (laughs) You don't know where he is, but he's somewhere. He could be in the same state as you, or he could be alive. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Manny actually perks up. So, a couple of things. One, we gotta get to our friends. 
Fitzwick, can I please use a your teleportation circle by chance? That would be really helpful for us to get back to help Io. And then Roshin, if you can describe your brother to me, I could send him a message. I could also scry for him. You could? Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, all you need to do is like mirror image him or just give me a general idea of who he is and I can send him a message. It's what bards do. Well, it's been a long time since I saw him, but I definitely remember. But I, I know that we have more important things to do. Maybe he can help us. Maybe he's strong like you. He's probably even stronger. Well, I'll leave it up to you. If you you tell me who he is and you show me a maybe a little minor illusion, yeah, what you remember him look like, I can send him a message. She nods and she holds out her her weird spindly gold hand thing, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, the blue crystal around her neck glows a little bit and. The light off of that and the shadows in the room kind of come slowly crawling into her hand and swirl around to make a, a cute little image of a cute little fox cub. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys see a little fox cub. He's got, uh, like, rusty brownish red fur, a little bushy tail, and brown eyes. All right, Manny will try to do sending. Okay. Ooh. Some random oh. fox out there just like... <laughs> Some random, random fox going to be like, hmm? I got 25 words. Okay. Uh, all right. Go ahead and send those 25 words, buddy. What, what are you saying? Hey there. My name's Manny. Um, I... Um, <laughs> I know that you don't know me, but I know your sister, Roshin. And, uh, we're looking for you. Is that 25 that, words? 18. That's 18. Right. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, is that is that all you're sending? Yeah. Okay. So you guys are all still standing there in this wizard's uh, tower and everything. And after you like you wait, minutes tick by. Uh, Roshin, you're you're waiting in suspense, wondering if Manny's going to get a reply back. And after a long few minutes, Manny, you hear a young voice reply back in your head sounds like a young man's voice really t shy and timid kind of nervous sounding uh, uh uh hello you you know my sister rosie is is she alive and that's where we're gonna call it for tonight <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for the Arius Adventures here on Party Advantage. Come join our community over on our Discord channel and hang out with the cast and fellow fans of the show by following the link in the episode description. You can also find us on our very own website, www.partyadvantagepod.com, where you can find updates for special announcements and events. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter using at Party Advantage for fun posts and episode updates. Lastly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you stay current with all of our episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back in two weeks for more Aries adventures as the Ram Pack continues their journey. 
Will the party find the advantage on their next encounter? Only one way to find out. See you then. <laughs>